Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom alaikum. When asked about his opposition to the Vietnam War, Muhammad Ali said that he prays five times a day for peace, not for war. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of many people, especially the people of Patterson who are in pain today, that we are praying for peace. We pray for it every day. And on November 16th of last year, we were right here on these steps for a vigil for peace, calling for a ceasefire three months ago. And at that time, there were 11,000 who were killed. Now, unfortunately, the death toll is 29,000. Those are human beings, innocent individuals, women, and sadly, children who have been killed. That's 18,000 since November 16th when we called for the ceasefire. And we're calling for a permanent ceasefire, for a permanent peace, and a permanent resolution in the region. We have to end the cycle of violence. None of us wants to be back here three months from now. None of us wants to be back here three days from now. We believe in a two-state solution, but it just can't be a talking point or a line that you just throw out so that people won't bother you about this situation. It has to happen. And that's why on President's Day, we are speaking directly to the President of the United States. And we're making a universal humanitarian appeal to our President. We are asking you to call for a permanent cease fire so that we are no longer mourning anyone who has been killed and so that we don't have to stand on the steps of City Hall asking for peace, pleading for peace, demanding peace. It's interesting because there are about 70 cities in the country that have called for a ceasefire. Nine of those cities are in Michigan. One of them is right here in Patterson. And I commend our city council because they've taken extra steps to call for a ceasefire. In fact, under the leadership of our corporation council, he wrote the resolutions so that we could send a strong message to our congressional representatives, our president of the United States, and anyone who cares, anyone with a heart, that we care for all humanity. All humanity. At this time, I want to call forward a dear friend and a champion for civil rights, equal rights, and human rights, the pastor of Christ Temple Church, the Reverend Dr. Weldon McWilliams IV. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today I join the million of voices who are calling for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. We are appalled by the levels of attack and the amount of death that we have seen in the region. As the mayor has stated earlier, this conflict has seen over 29,000 deaths and about two-thirds of that number are women and children. Reports have stated that up to 80% of Palestinians have been driven out of their homes and have been left to starve. According to Oxfam International, about 250 Palestinians are killed per day. And that is, a high, that is at a rate higher been conflicts that were with Syria, the Sudan, Iraq, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and Yemen. And more lives are even at risk due to hunger and disease. Today, we make an appeal to President Biden, and we say to the United States of America, if you are truly a government of the people, you must listen to the growing voices of the people. And the growing sentiment of your people is to push for a permanent ceasefire. President Biden, the United States cannot remain complicit in the unprecedented levels of death that this war has produced. This nation gives Israel approximately $3.3 billion of aid every year, and most of that funding goes towards their military. The U.S. government has just approved an aid package of $14 billion for Israel. 
We are calling for a ceasefire because a ceasefire would first and foremost stop all the unlawful attacks. It would halt the, mount, the mounting death toll. A ceasefire would allow agencies to get life-saving aid, water, and medical supplies into the Gaza Strip and to address the unprecedented levels, unprecedented levels of human suffering. Lastly, we call on President Biden and his government to use some of this funding that we have sent for Israeli aid and invest them into domestic needs. There are many communities in these United States that could be beneficiaries of such an aid package. This package could address the issues that exist in this country. Issues such as the quality of education, quality housing, food justice, environmental justice, revamping our criminal justice system, eliminating student debt. This is just some of the many areas that could be addressed with such an aid package. We want the same sense of urgency to be given here domestically. Lastly, as a pastor, I want to make sure you understand my stance. I do not believe that God is neutral in situations such as this. As a subscriber and a practitioner of liberation theology, I believe that God is on the side of those who are oppressed and God is always on the side of justice. So siding with and supporting those who are oppressed and exploited, I believe is always in the will of God. And it is because I side with justice and it is because I'm advocating for the end of this war that is producing extreme levels of oppression, I'm advocating that the United States reevaluate and reconsider the way that she has moved thus far in the conflict. Listen to the people, do the will of the people, and let's implement a permanent ceasefire now. Thank you. Pastor, thank you for that powerful and poignant message. You mentioned starvation, and I'm sure many of us have seen on social media the images. And we've seen that Palestinians have resorted to eating animal feed and drinking seawater. That can't happen anywhere in the world. And once again, that's why we stand united. At this time, we have a friend of ours who was with us on November 16th, and it speaks to the fact that people beyond the Muslim community and the Arab American community support this permanent call for ceasefire. John Moscow from the New Jersey Voices for Peace. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to be speaking on behalf of Jewish Voice for Peace of Northern New Jersey. Thank you. Mayor Sayag for calling this urgently needed press conference and for inviting JVP to participate. As the back of my t-shirt says, as Jews, we demand an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Now, we are outraged that President Biden is apparently planning to again veto a UN Security Council resolution for a ceasefire even as Netanyahu threatens more attacks on Rafa, which is now reportedly the most densely populated place on earth and from which there is no place to go. President Biden has the power to stop the attacks on Rafa and to stop further genocide, as well as to stop the settler attacks on Palestinian villagers on the West Bank. When these kind of attacks took place on Jews where my ancestors came from in Russia, they were called pogroms, and they are still pogroms, and Jews and nobody else should be carrying out pogroms. We here and those like us around the world must keep continuous and unrelenting pressure on the president to use his power to save lives. The t-shirt on the front also says, not in our name. Israel and its supporters do not speak for all Jews. They do not speak for us. We want to be very clear that anti-Zionism, criticism of Israel, is not anti-Semitism. Zionism is a political movement and Israel is a state. They are not a religion or a people. When Palestinians fight 
against the taking of their land and against oppression, apartheid, and occupation, they are not being anti-Semitic. The claims that criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic is an attempt to avoid talking about the need for justice in Palestine, Israel. Many Jews in Israel and in the United States are still in a state of intergenerational trauma from the Shoah, the Jewish Nakba, or Holocaust. This is understandable, but is mistaken. One genocide does not justify another. Palestinians were not responsible for the murder of six million Jews in Europe. Britain, France, and the United States turned a blind eye to the murder of Jews in Europe, and then were only too happy to dump the Jews onto Palestinian land, who then got attacked at being anti-Semitic for resisting. We say, never again means never again, not only for Jews, but never again for anyone. In, a keeping, in addition to keeping pressure on President Biden, there are two New Jersey things that I want to mention. One is that there is currently a bill in the New Jersey legislature to declare IHRA, or IRA, which stands for the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, to make this an official definition on behalf of the state. This, we managed to get this shelved last year, but it's popped up again. It must be defeated because it equates criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. And this is a fundamental flaw. The other, which people may be less aware of, is that on March 10th, which also happens that evening to be the first night of Ramadan, at Synagogue Keter Torah in Tinek, from 12 until 6 p.m., there will be yet another sale of illegally occupied land in the West Bank to settlers. They are inviting people to buy land in the West Bank as a second home, perhaps, as a vacation home. This is obscene. Anyway, all I can say is this is going to be a long and protracted struggle. We just have to keep on fighting. We have to keep on saying that never again means never again for anyone. We need to say that we need a ceasefire, a ceasefire now. And we need to say that we need a solution of justice and peace in the Middle East, not of apartheid, occupation, and oppression, and genocide. Thank you. John, on behalf of everyone here, we want to thank you for your courage, your compassion, and for always standing with us. Jewish voices for peace and all voices for peace as we stand in solidarity in the steps of City Hall once again calling for a permanent ceasefire. The woman that was with us on November 16th, just like John was, is from Pots Christi. And she made it a point to say that President Biden is Catholic, just like she is and just like I am. And we appeal to him and his faith to make sure that he does right by the people peace-loving people in the world. And so at this time, I call forward Kathy O'Leary from Pox Christi. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Mayor, for calling us all together here. Um, and thank you for inviting me again uh, to speak. I am Kathy O'Leary. I am the region coordinator for Pox Christi, New Jersey. We are a region of Pox Christi, USA. And our umbrella organization, Pax Christi International, has the blessing and approval of the Vatican as well as NGO status at the UN. I am here today to speak about our faith, our shared faith with, uh, with President Biden. In Christ Jesus, we worship a brown-skinned man whose pregnant mother was, a date, was ordered by an occupying force to travel and then to give birth in a stable. A man who as an infant escaped a genocide fleeing through Gaza and into Egypt. We worship a man who was falsely accused, imprisoned, and executed by that same occupying force. In his now famous sermon, the Reverend Munther Itzak, the academic dean at the Bethlehem Bible Co College said that, quote, if Jesus were born today, he would be born under the rubble, end quote. That is where Jesus is now. Jesus is under the rubble. He is in the hospital ward with the children whose limbs were amputated without anesthesia. He is with the sniper victims who lie bleeding in the street. 
He is among the throngs of people waiting for a small ration of food. He is walking with the children sent by their mothers to fetch buckets of water from the only available source, which is contaminated with seawater, sewage, or bacteria leaching from rotting corpses buried everywhere. As famine and disease begin to take hold, Jesus is close with all those who are suffering. I hear people wonder aloud these days, where is the Catholic Church? The Catholic Church is also in Gaza. The parishioners of Holy Family Parish in Gaza City have largely refused to flee, and they have also refused the orders of the Israeli military to evacuate to the south, as the parishioners at St. Porphyrius Greek, Catholic, uh, Greek Orthodox Catholic Church have. The Pope calls the people at Holy Family almost every day when communications will allow. During a recent visit to the Vatican and following an audience with the Pope, Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzaballa, the Patriarch of the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem, said that Gaza's Christians are, quote, living through the same situation as, as everyone else. They are not a people apart, he said, and that their situation is, quote, a microcosm of the difficulties that the whole people in Gaza, that the whole population is experiencing, end quote. The church holds the people sheltering at Holy Family and all the people in Gaza close in prayer. And Caritas and Catholic Charities continue to advocate for and minister to the people as best they can. The Pope has also called multiple times for a ceasefire. He is joined in this call by the U.S. bishops, including the president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, as well as the bishops of San Diego, Tucson, and New Mexico. Catholic media outlets uplift the pleas from the Christian community in Gaza and report the words of the Pope and other bishops calling for a permanent ceasefire. It should not be surprising then that according to a poll by the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding, the Catholic lady overwhelmingly agree with these calls for a permanent ceasefire. The poll released on February 12th studied the views of religious groups in the United States and found that Catholics were second only to Muslims in the percentage who were in favor of a permanent ceasefire, polling at 71% and 75% respectively. It is, however, a disconcerting time to be a Catholic in America, with a Catholic president who attends Mass regularly, carries a rosary, and finds himself at home quoting scripture in the doctrines of the church, but who is yet to allow himself to be close to the suffering of the Palestinian people. In fact, the United States, through the leadership of our Catholic president, is supplying the majority of the weapons for what many scholars have been calling a genocide since the early days of the conflict. As we sit here today, according to a report by the Wall Street Journal, Joe Biden's administration is set to send what is said to be enough munitions to be able to continue the slaughter in Gaza for another 19 weeks. In 1973, Father Daniel Berrigan, a Jesuit peace activist, gave a speech about the militarism of the State of Israel in which he said, quote, on the scales of the spirit, as the nations are finally judged, it is a tragedy beyond calculating that the State of Israel should become the repository and finally the tomb of the Jewish soul, that in place of Jewish compassion, Israel should legislate armaments and yet more armaments, that in place of Jewish compassion, for the poor and forgotten, Israel should legislate evictions, uprootings, destruction of goods, imprisonment, terrorism. That in place of Jewish peaceableness, Israel should legislate a law of expanding violence. As Catholics, we are mindful that our faith has its roots in this same compassion for the poor and the stranger. The pillars of our church, the apostles, and the rock of Peter are all Jewish, and we hold them tightly and in the highest esteem. And there is no denying that the brown-skinned man born in Bethlehem, under an occupying power that we worship, and who commands us to love our enemy and lay down our swords, is Jewish. But we must wonder, particularly now, if it is not America that is becoming the tomb of the Christian soul. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Another concern that I have, we are weeks away from the holy month of Ramadan. And as we plead for peace, there must be mercy as well. There must be an end to this.
because when we talk about Muhammad Ali and praying five times a day for peace during the whole month of Ramadan, many sacrifices are made, and we don't want any more blood shed any time, but especially during the holy month of Ramadan. At this time, we're joined by the president of the United Clergy Council of Patterson, Pastor Barry Graham from Canaan Baptist Church. Good afternoon. We stand here together with our brothers and sisters as we come to, to demand a ceasefire. One of the greatest pushes in the civil rights movement was the day that the mother of Emmett Till decided that she wanted the nation to see exactly how they were being abused. After seeing his marred body, the, the sentiments of the world turned toward the civil rights movement. We're in this age where we all sit and see. We see what's going on. We see the death. We see the destruction. We see little children being carried out. And I can't understand how anyone of good faith could stand and not be convicted by what they see. Uh, those are our children. Those are our brothers. Those are our sisters. And we have become so desensitized to violence, war, and killing that it just pops up like a, another headline. But we forget the people that are being affected. The ones who lost their lives, their livelihoods. So much destruction. So we come to say that we need a ceasefire. We need to care for all of our brothers and sisters, whether they're Jewish, Muslim, um, Christian, whatever they are, we are all the people of God. And as we stand together, united as the people of God, we call for a ceasefire and want the world to know that the people of God, in their view, every life matters. And those lives matters. And we seek to do all we can to protect everyone. So we stand together with our brothers who have lost loved ones, who have um, had been affected directly. Use your compassion. Look at what you see and it ought to create something in you that says the violence must stop now. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. We've also been joined by Musa Naji from CARE, New Jersey. This time we'd like to hear from him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for organizing this press conference. I am here today on behalf of CARE New Jersey to send a message to President Joe Biden, demanding that he calls for a permanent and immediate ceasefire in Gaza. President Biden holds immense power to influence change across the world, and today is a core American holiday to celebrate the president of this country, but it has also become known to millions across the world as day number 137 of the ongoing genocide in Gaza carried out by Israel. The death toll in Gaza has tragically surpassed 29,000, of which 11,000 are innocent children. It is not a suggestion that we are making to President Biden to call for a ceasefire. It is a demand, a demand that will lead to saving the lives of 2 million Palestinians living in Gaza. The crisis in Gaza is not a foreign issue. It is not something happening 6,000 miles away that, with no effects here on American soil. The crisis in Gaza is a crisis for all Americans. As we have seen, the escalation of violence in Gaza has led to a concerning rise of anti-Arab, anti-Muslim, and anti-Semitic bigotry and violence within our country, posing a significant threat to the well-being and the safety of our diverse communities and all Americans. We have all witnessed these disheartening acts of violence carried out across several states when a land person in Plainfield, Illinois, decided to stab six-year-old Walid al-Fayyumi for no other reason than being Muslim or when Zakaria, a Palestinian man, was dragged out of his car and stabbed in Texas for, wearing a kufi, for having a kufiya on his car, or when three college students in Burlington, Vermont, were shot for speaking Arabic and wearing kufiyas, and one left paralyzed. And let us not forget the Palestinian American families here in the United States that have lost many members of their families in, in Gaza. And let us not forget the Palestinians in New Jersey who all together have lost 1,000 members of their families in Gaza. Since the escalation of violence in Israel and Palestine, CARE has received a total of 3,578 requests for help and reports of violence from states, counties, and districts within our nation. 
It, is, it shows a 178% increase over last year's reports. These incidents span a broad spectrum of hostility, including har harassment, discrimination, and threats affecting students who are visibly Muslim and who have spoken up for protecting civilians in Gaza. The call for a permanent ceasefire is long overdue, but nonetheless, it is still due. A permanent ceasefire will play a pivotal role in ending violence and opening the blockade in Gaza and allowing the dozens of trucks, trucks filled with humanitarian aid to reach the starving children, women, and men in Gaza. Thank you. And just as a point of information, as far as our population, Palestinians and Patterson is concerned, we have the largest Palestinian population percentage-wise in the United States. And we are proud of the fact that Palestinians have come to Patterson and call our city home. In fact, they've established themselves in our neighborhoods, with one specific South Patterson, and by far one of the most thriving sections, not just in the city, but in the state. People know this. People travel from all over the country to come and shop and eat at our Palestinian restaurants and Palestinian retail, retail stores as well. And we have a Palestinian American Community Center that promotes Palestinian heritage and history and culture and teaches the Arab language. In fact, all three of my children participate in the program at the Palestinian American Community Center. And today, representing PAC is the executive director. I want to start off by saying thank you to Mayor Andre Sayer and the City of Patterson for putting this urgent call for our ceasefire today. I am here on behalf of the Palestinian American Community Center. It's been 137 days of ongoing genocide against the people of Gaza, funded, paid for, and supported by our government. Today is President's Day, and on this day, President Biden, we have gathered to tell you our thoughts. We stand here today as New Jersey constituents to tell you, Mr. Biden, that in these 137 days, Israel has killed at least 2,000 family members for New Jerseyans. As the person who said before me, this is not something far off. 2,000, at least 2,000 members of our families have been killed. There are at least 5,000 relatives that remain in critically injured conditions there are 1,200 children under the age of 18 who have now become orphans. These are our families, our friends, and you have failed them. Since October, we as Palestinian Americans have warned against this happening. Israel's intent has been perfectly clear since day one. The ethnic cleansing and mass murder of the Palestinian people. We have spent every day since then for 137 days trying to appeal to you and convince you that this has to stop. We have told you the statistics and the numbers of the 28,000 civilians killed, of the women killed, of the children killed. We have told you about countless families that you have completely wiped off of this earth. We have told you about the infrastructure that has been targeted, the bombing of universities, schools, and refugee camps, Hospitals that have been denied basic resources, sieged, targeted, and bombed to the point that the healthcare system has completely collapsed. We have told you of about at least 137 journalists that have been targeted and killed by Israel. We have brought you first-hand accounts of your residents and citizens telling you how close to death they were brought. We have told you the heartbreaking stories of individuals like six-year-old Hind Rajab, who sat alone, scared, in a car filled with her relatives, who she had just witnessed being murdered, shot dead by Israeli snipers. As the rest of us waited to hear the news of whether she was rescued from that car or not, her mother worried about the PTSD she would have to endure if she were still alive. Days later, it was too late. News sources revealed that Israel bombed and killed her too. And as the Super Bowl aired, Israel bombed Rafah, the final safe zone, as they claimed. And as they continue to move, move civilians further and further down the Gaza Strip, they continue to kill, target, and starve them to death. And it continues to be justified by the state of Israel and by you, Mr. President. How much is left for us to say, Mr. President? How much more convincing do you need to call for a ceasefire? 
In a, UN, in a UN assembly hearing back in December, 153 countries voted for a ceasefire. Since then, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia have also joined the call. The International Court of Justice today continues its hearings against the State of Israel after already ruling that Israel is committing genocidal acts. Mr. President, your people are asking you to listen to us and call for a permanent ceasefire today. Our country was founded upon the principles of freedom and the pursuit of human dignity and justice for all. Why are Palestinians not afforded the same right? Why must Palestinians continue to be vilified and dehumanized? Why must our tax dollars every year contribute to the death and destruction and ethnic cleansing of our people? We can't bring back Hind Rajab. We can't bring back Wa'al Dahdu's family. But we can stop Israel's genocide against the Palestinian people by calling for a permanent ceasefire and allowing humanitarian aid today. You can change the course of history. And we demand a permanent ceasefire today. Thank you. Rania, I want to thank you for your stirring words. And we've been talking about 29,000 Palestinians killed, mostly children. But we've got to bear in mind these aren't numbers. These are human beings, names, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, daughters and sons that we've lost. At this time, I want to call forward members of the Municipal Council because for months they've been calling for a ceasefire. They've done it more than once. And it's been led by our Palestinian American Councilman here in Patterson who represents the 6th Ward where we have the concentration of Palestinians. We have with us our 6th Ward Councilman Al Abdelaziz and he'll also be joined by the Vice President of the City Council, Louis Velez, and our former Council President, Shaheen Khalik. Good afternoon. First and foremost, I want to thank the pastors and the organizations that are here to stand with us to send a message, a loud and clear message to our president, Joe Biden. The time is now for a ceasefire. This city, this city council has unanimously passed resolutions calling for a ceasefire, calling our federal representatives to sign on for a ceasefire. Every minute Every single day that we wait for action to be taken by our president, hundreds and thousands of people that look like me are dead. We can't wait any more longer, Mr. President. Take action, join the international community. The time for peace is now. We need a ceasefire now. And I'll leave you at this. In America, we have a saying when we try to curtail drinking and driving. We say, friends don't let friends drink and drive. Well, Mr. President, friends don't let friends commit genocide. Cease fire now, the time is now, and let's get some more action. Thank you. We'll call on the Council, Pre Council Vice President, Luis Velez. Thank you, Councilman Adelaziz, Councilman uh, Chayi Kali, who will give his remark in a few minutes. I was standing back here. I just want to say that how you could sleep in peace, President, President Biden, how you could sleep in peace knowing that our brothers and sisters are getting killed. How you could sit, bow your knees, and pray when you know that our people are dying. How you could eat and tell your employees, come and serve me dinner when Palestine is suffering. How you could sleep in peace. I call not only the president, I called the vice president of the United States also to join the ceasefire. I call the Congress and the Senate to join ceasefire. Do not fund these wars. How you could sleep in peace? I cannot sleep in peace knowing that my brothers and sisters are suffering. I cannot sleep in peace knowing that tears are coming from the eyes and the people are crying.
to peace. How you could sleep in peace. I am a father of three children. I have parents as well. I could not imagine losing any of them. The Palestinian people have suffered enough. To over 29,000 people has been killed. We demand a ceasefire from our president. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members of the Municipal Council. And we do not want you to pass or have to pass any additional resolutions calling for a ceasefire. That must end now. We have a friend of ours from Franklin Township. He's the commissioner on the Board of Education. We're honored to have him here to join our voices. The steps of City Hall, Sammy Shaban. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everybody, uh, for this opportunity. My name's Sammy. My father was born in Yaffa. In 1948, he was removed at gunpoint from his house and displaced down to Gaza. My mother was born in Gaza. Our entire family has now been displaced yet again in the past few weeks, down to Rafah, where they continue to be bombed. 19 members of my family have been killed. A ceasefire to me is almost, what are you talking about? We need justice. My call today is to three separate people. First and foremost is President Biden. President Biden, you have failed us. Let's be unequivocal in our words. Let's not mince what we're trying to say here. You have failed us. And who is us? You failed the Muslim, Palestinian, Arab communities, whether Christian, Jewish, or Muslim, in that the targeting of Muslims has spiked over the past few months. You have failed all black and brown communities throughout America because you continue to reinforce that black and brown lives matter less, matter less than everybody else. You have failed all American people because those oaths that you took when you took your office to preserve and protect the United States Constitution that calls for equality, that calls for justice, that calls for allowing for the pursuit of happiness have been obliterated over the past few months and we have been the ones to fund that. You have failed all of us. The second person I want to call to attention are my media friends. You have failed us. You have told us that our eyes deceive us, that what we see in utter destruction is not actually happening, that there's multiple sides to this, that wait, it's complicated. 20,000 dead women and children is not complicated. To anybody who has a soul, and I'm speaking to each and every person here with a camera, you have a responsibility to not only tell the truth, but spread that to everybody around the world. And when you only tell part of the truth, and then you tell us that what we see is not what we're actually seeing, the destruction and bombing, the flattening, my family is sending me pictures of their homes completely razed to the ground. My uncle died in Egypt last week. Well, what does he have to do with that? I didn't count him in the 19th. The trauma that this is causing extends generationally. When you talk about the trauma that comes from seeing your loved ones blown up to smithereens, when you talk about all your wealth, I want you to think for a moment that all your wealth is now gone. What do you have left? What is there to rely on? Your home, your property, everything is gone. The media has to do better to report on this. And the third person I want to speak to directly is my family. I'm sorry. I have failed you. The people that we rely on in this country have failed you. My country has funded your death. 
It needs to stop now. And I am sorry I didn't do more. I'm sorry I didn't have more ability to change things myself. I wish I could carry each and every one of you on my shoulders. I wish I could put a smile on your face for just one moment. I wish that the serenity of God would drop down on you for just a moment in the middle of this chaos. I wish we didn't have to get that phone call saying, I'm sorry, Uncle Muhammad is dead. And four generations are dead with him. My one-year-old cousin, who didn't even live to see her first birthday, is dead. I wish I could have been there to protect you. I wish I could have been there to do something more. But what I could do now is speak to you directly and say I'm sorry and I will do my best from now on to not just call for a simple end of genocide, a simple ceasefire, but to call for justice in this area and for all Palestinians and for all people that are suffering from injustice around the world. This country, my country, needs to stop funding this and hold people accountable to justice and equality for all people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. I know that was not easy, and I appreciate you coming all the way up here to Patterson to share not only your pain and frustration, but to share in our call for a permanent ceasefire now. At this time, I want to call forward two pastors that come to my office the first Tuesday of every month to pray with me. And for the last four months, we've been praying. We've been praying for peace. We've been praying for a ceasefire. We're praying for a permanent solution to this long-standing problem. I want to call forward Pastor John Algra and Pastor Doug Goulding to speak at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And to our brothers and sisters, we share your pain. We stand with you in your pain. And for Christians, this is a season also of fasting, a season of Lent. But I want to read what a sixth century prophet, the prophet Isaiah, said to us about what kind of fasting God values. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen, God says, to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. And Isaiah goes on, God is a God of justice. And I want to say a word, my brother inspired me to say a word to the Christian community that has what I consider a misplaced theology that if Israel is not in where it is, Jesus cannot come back. That is not how I read the Bible. And that has led to tremendous Christian support for what is going on in Israel. And I challenge the Christian community to read the Bible that Jesus is for justice because God is a God of justice. And this is the kind of fasting that he chooses. Amen. In my Bible, it states uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 22, verse 18, for those, of, for those people who believe that they're the descendants of Abraham and believe that they have a right to the land that they occupy, they have read the Bible wrong. The Bible states if that you, if you are descendants of Abraham, you should be a blessing and not a murderer. The Bible states that through you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Killing innocent lives is not a blessing. You are called to bless and not to murder. I demand 
as an African-American Christian that President Biden stop enabling this genocide that's taking place in the Middle East. They are my brothers and my sisters. And if they are not free, I am not free. We must realize that this is not God's plan because God loves the Palestinian just like everybody else. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves all people of the world. And if you're doing this in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, you are wrong. President Biden, you need to stop the killing now. We demand a ceasefire now. You don't represent us. As a man of color, I'm re-traumatized because they did that to us in this country. This re-traumatized me as I look at the killing and the injustice that goes on because I have, my ancestors had to deal with this. I cannot keep silent to see this genocide that's taking place in the Middle East. Cease fire now, cease fire forever. If Palestine is not free, we're not free. If Palestine is not free, we are not free. If Palestine is not free, we are not free. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I'm sure many of us have read a recent letter to the editor in the Los Angeles Times written by a doctor who said that this is not war, it's annihilation. And he saw the horrors that are happening in the hospitals there. Today we have a local doctor, Dr. Mahmoud Akhil, who's going to represent his fellow physicians at this moment. So please, Dr. Akhil, come forward. I am here as the president of the National Arab American Medical Association, which is a non-profit, non-political, non-sectarian, educational, and charitable organization. I just want to read a letter or part of the letter we sent to the president and to the secretary of the state last Friday. Dear President Biden, I, I write you with a heavy heart and urgent plea on behalf of the National Arab American Medical Association regarding the dire humanitarian situation unfolding in Gaza. NAMA is an organization committed to advancing health care and addressing medical needs, and we find it imperative to express our concerns and seek critical assistance from your office. As the president of the NAMA, I am compelled to bring to your attention the catastrophic condition that demand immediate intervention. Mr. President, the situation in Gaza has reached a critical juncture where the lives of innocent men, women, and children hang in the balance. With limited access to medical care and essential supplies, the people of Gaza are facing an unprecedented health crisis that necessitates urgent assistance. The humanitarian toll is incredibly grim and severe in nature. The absence of adequate medical facilities and resources has left the population of Gaza vulnerable to an unimaginable suffering and a preventable loss of life. As medical professionals, we have taken an oath to serve and care for every human life, and it is incumbent upon us to uphold this sacred duty in the face of such adversity. It is with a deep sense of responsibility that we turn to the United States, a beacon of hope and compassion to request the deployment of an American field hospital or a floating hospital to Gaza. The United States, with its core value of compassion, justice, and commitment to humanity, has the power to make a profound difference in the lives of those who are most vulnerable. It is in time of a crisis that the true character of a nation is revealed. And I implore you, Mr. President, 
to demonstrate the compassion and leadership that define our great nation. It is the time to present the U.S. as a global leader that it is, notably during time of a humanitarian crisis. Mr. President, the consequences of an action are too dire to contemplate. Without immediate intervention, the health and well-being of the people of Gaza and indeed beyond its borders will continue to deteriorate and devastating consequences for generations to come. My fellow colleagues and I, as a medical professional, have an oath to serve and care for every human, irrespective of their nationality or circumstances. This commitment resonates deeply with the essence of American value. As a nation that cherishes every human life, we cannot stand idle by while our fellow human be beings suffer. I urge you, Mr. President, to heed this present call for assistance and to mobilize the necessary resources to address this humanitarian catastrophe with the urgency and compassion it deserves. Mr. President, the world is watching and history will judge us by our actions in this moment of a crisis. By acting now, we can uphold the values that make America a force for good in the world. Your intervention will not only save lives, but also serve as a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity and exemplify, exemplify the compassion and solidarity that define the value of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Before we hear from our last speaker, I want to thank the Commissioner from the Patterson Board of Education, Joel Ramirez, for joining us. The President of the Islamic Center for State County Board, Ibrahim Fahmi, thank you. Mayor of Cranberry, Iman El Badawi, thank you for joining us. Nick from Paramus, should have been a councilman, thank you for joining us. And our Deputy Mayor, Rod Ode, thank you. And, of course, Diab Mustafa from the Palestinian American Community Center. We heard from his daughter. I'm still absorbing all of that. Thank you. And my corporation counsel I acknowledged earlier, Ayman Abushi, the first Palestinian American to serve in a mayor's cabinet. Our last speaker has personally suffered loss. Fifteen members of his family killed in Gaza. He is our leader here in Patterson. In fact, we just recently honored him for Muslim Heritage Month, where he was bestowed the key to the city for being a beacon of hope in Patterson. But this time I call forward the Imam from the Islamic Center of Pasek County, Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Katanani. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you, peace be with you. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of you. Thank you very much, my mayor. This is the mayor which I have and which I, I am very honored to have. God bless you. This kind of leadership which we want, leadership who is calling for peace, calling for justice, for one humanity, for all people as one humanity and one people. My brothers and sisters, what is said in this meeting is very, very important and very powerful, and I believe in every word had been said. Thank you very much, my leaders. Thank you very much, my interfaith leaders, reverends, and fathers, and council city. God bless you. Yes. We have to stand together as one humanity against all types of massacres and genocide in Gaza and everywhere. My brothers and sisters, as a Palestinian who lost 15 of my members in the first week of this war, 15 members of my cousins and my uncle and his wife and his grandchildren, who had been killed in the first week. And since then, I believe that this war is against humanity. 
not against one family or against one citizenship. It is against all of us because God said in the Quran, if you kill one humanity, one mankind without just reason, as if you kill all of us and all humanity, this is the law of God that the all lives are matter, not the lives of the, this, this side or that side. All lives are matter. And today as we are gathered here to send our message for our president and his cabinet, as you heard from many speakers, that our government failed us and failed all humanity. Mr. President, you failed Palestinians in America. Americans, Arabs, Muslims, Muslim Americans, Arab, Arab Americans, all of us, you, you failed millions, even billions of people who are standing today with justice for Palestinians. You failed us. And the history will be written that you stood with the terrorist, the ugliest war in this, in, in this, in this, his, in this time. The history will be written that you supported Mr. Netanyahu, the terrorist guy who is worse than Hitler. The history will be written that Netanyahu killed thousands and thousands of children and women. He bombarded all the mosques of Gaza Strip. More than 350 mosques had been bombarded. All the churches, the historical churches of Gaza Strip had been bombarded and destroyed completely. All the hospitals had been taken out of the service and had been bombarded. All the doctors are in the jail now. Tell me which, what kind of war is this? What kind of war is this? When you kill all people, regardless of their age, or their race, or anything. Mr. President, you are wrong. You are wrong. Please see the truth and stand for the truth. Stand for justice. History will not forgive. People will not forget. We will not forget and we will not forgive. What is going on now is unacceptable in any way. According to the, book, to the Holy Book or to any book, it is unacceptable. So it is not in the name of the Moses or Jesus or Muhammad or any, any prophet. This is not the faith which we believe in. We believe in the faith of justice, the faith of one humanity, the faith of standing for your rights. We as Palestinians had been spilled and taken out from our homes from Palestine 1948. I am originally from Yazur, which is close to, to uh, Yafa. My family had been or scattered to Jordan, to West Bank, to Gaza, to Syria. We are all over the world. Why? Because of the Nakba and the catastrophe. Until this moment, we did not see any justice for our rights. We did not see our, our rights. Even, especially, especially, and let me say it very clear, because of our country, because of America. Because America st stood wrongly beside the aggressor, the oppressor, not the oppressed and aggressed people. Our country is the biggest supporter to this war. So, Mr. President, please, we don't plead. We ask you as people, as Americans, we ask you as a human being, because all people 
in the side of justice, but you chose to stand up in the position and in the side of the aggressors and the massacres. So my brothers and sisters, I would like to thank you very much for saying the truth and standing for truth. It is a time of one humanity to come together to stop this war today, not tomorrow, today. Not only ceasefire for one month or two months. We want permanent ceasefire and to stand up and so to sit down. Sit down for negotiation. We can negotiate with each other for the best, for the best of our humanity. We don't want more lives to be lost. We want people to live together as one humanity with respect and dignity for all. God bless you all. God bless those who are standing for justice. And God will not accept or respect those who are standing with massacres and genocide people. God bless America. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Sheikh. So there's nothing left that needs to be said. Patterson is known for its history. Patterson is known for its diversity. But today, let it be noted that Patterson is known for our humanity. You may observe, you may have observed that you had people from all different walks of life here today joining us in this universal and united call for a permanent ceasefire. You had Muslims, you had Christians, you had Jews calling for this permanent ceasefire. You've had black, brown, and white call for this permanent ceasefire. But ultimately what we have in common is that, is that we are all children of God. And as children of God, we cherish our children's futures. We bleed the same blood. And today we're asking for the same thing. Many of us have supported President Biden in the past. And it is not about the next election. This is about the generation that is being killed. He can, being by virtue of being the President of the United States, can weigh in with his influence. He can have a defining moment in his presidency. He can lead the way. He can have a Nobel Peace Prize winning moment for himself and get all world leaders in the room and say that we must end the cycle of violence once and for all. The way we work in Patterson is if I have a dispute with this legislative body, we sit in the room and we don't leave until it is resolved. President Biden, get the world leaders in one room and don't leave until it is resolved. Thank you for joining us today.